Today we want to look at tradition number 23 from the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. And the theme which he wants to have us reflect upon today is about the importance of endurance and fortitude within our lives. Now when we look in the verses of the Noble Quran and the traditions of the 14 infallibles, we see the topic of sabr or this spiritual endurance and fortitude to be one of the most important topics uh, mentioned in terms of the ethical injunctions which are within the Quran and the prophetic teachings. And in fact, we see that this is one of the verses, or this is one of the topics rather, that Allah talks about in numerous verses. And in fact, in one verse we're told that one of the reasons why people will enter into paradise, one of the things that they did in this world was to show endurance and, and the spiritual fortitude in the face of adversity and also ease. But before we go into the discussion, let us look at the tradition from the commander of the faithful which we wish to review today. In this saying, the Imam has said the following, I advise you to have fortitude, as indeed fortitude is to faith, just as the head is to the rest of the body. There is no benefit with a body without a head. And similarly, there is no goodness in faith without fortitude. When we look at the religious teachings of Islam, we see that actually a majority, if not all of the actions that we perform or that we have been instructed to perform, and also the things that we have been advised to keep away from, all of these really go back down their, their prime common denominator or the, the fundamental pillar we can say up in, upon which all of these actions are based upon is that of sabr, of having that spiritual fortitude and endurance. Meaning that the obligations that we have to perform on a daily basis or a weekly or a yearly basis, all of these they have their foundational um, support in, in having spiritual endurance and fortitude to perform them. And conversely, all of the things which we are prohibited from performing, they take a, a sense of fortitude and ability and endurance to keep away from. Meaning that these things are not simply very easy to, to keep away from or to perform, but rather it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of perseverance, a lot of stamina, a lot of spiritual fortitude to actually um, perform the actions which we are obligated to perform and to refrain from those actions which we have been asked to keep away from. Our scholars tell us that patience, sabr, fortitude is of two types, a positive form of patience and a negative form of patience. To understand this, let us give a few examples or, or better, you know, relate this topic. So we see that negative patience, negative fortitude, is when a person is put face to face with a difficulty in life. Um, or a challenge that they have to overcome. And rather than working to actually overcome that hurdle, that overcome that challenge, they simply give up on life. They don't actually put an effort in to, uh, to conquer that challenge within their life. This is what we refer to, as the, or what the scholars refer to as negative patience, where we don't have that inner fortitude, that inner stamina or strength built up through our spiritual character to actually counter the outside forces. So a person who is being oppressed by, uh, whether it be at a family level, at a community level, or at a, a, at a societal level within their own country, those who don't have that sabr, that fortitude, that, that endurance, they will simply put up with the oppression, with the tyranny, with the injustice, with the wrongs being committed to them and other people. And they will just throw their hands up and say, well, what can I do? I don't have the ability to change my circumstance. This is negative patience, negative endurance, and it is something which Islam has never accepted nor condoned from its followers. But on the other end of the spectrum is what we call a positive perseverance, positive endeavoring, meaning that we come across a challenge in life, we come across a hurdle, a difficulty, and rather, just, rather than just giving up and not trying to overcome it, we say that, you know what, I know my goal and what I want to attain in this life, and this is merely a, a, a temporary barrier, it's a hurdle which I have to cross over. And so that individual who has positive patience, who has a positive endurance and fortitude in his or her life based upon their spiritual teachings, 
based upon their uh, firm, unwavering commitment to Islam, the Quran, and the teachings of the Prophet and his family, they would look at such challenges as being a hurdle to overcome, as one would do in a sporting event. That they would look at that challenge and they would say, I'm going to find a way to overcome that difficulty. And so they use positive perseverance to overcome these barriers or so-called so barriers in life. As we mentioned, the concept of sabr or patience, fortitude, having that spiritual strength to counter and to conquer all of our challenges is something which Allah has repeated many times in the Quran. In one particular verse, for example, Allah tells us where He addresses the believers, where He says, O oh, you who believe, He says, encourage the believers towards the battlefront, those who are working to protect Islam. He says in the verse that if there were to be 20 of you who have patience, then these 20 patient individuals can overcome 100 people who do not have patience, who are not fighting for the sake of God, who are not standing up against an oppressive force, um, who are fighting in the sake of materialism or material goals or ideologies which are un-Islamic. And he says if there were to be 100 people of patience, 100 people who have that inner uh, patience and fortitude and, and, and spiritual stamina, he says that those 100 individuals can easily conquer 1,000 people who do not have such uh, spiritual fortitude. And Allah says that the reason is because those who do not lack, those who lack uh, the spiritual patience, the fortitude, the stamina, the ability, He says that these are people who have no rationale, no intellect. They don't think about things. So we see that Allah is combining, our Creator is combining this patience, this topic of uh, spiritual endeavor and endurance to people who reflect and think and who have an understanding. And we see in this verse and many other chapters of the Quran where patience is given such a beautiful uh, picture and a vision that it is really the key for a believer, for a man or a woman to really make it towards the gates of paradise through in knowing that they will go through difficulties in life but having such endurance that they will overcome these challenges and that they will not let anything get in their way towards their ultimate goal which is obviously for us as believers the goal is to reach to that meeting with our Creator Allah God uh, in the next world and so therefore as we close we understand the importance and we hopefully take some time to reflect on the many other verses of the Quran that speak about this patience about sabr to reflect on the traditions of the Prophet and the infallibles where they also give us the description of patience and we again reflect on these words of the commander of the faithful where he combines or he uh, shows us the status of patience with iman with true faith is that with a head to a body and just as a head uh, you know a headless body is of no benefit to anybody Similarly, the commander of the faithful says that if one has faith, religiosity, he follows the religion uh, apparent in, in, in its apparent reading, but he or she lacks this spiritual fortitude and endurance to uh, bear the difficulties and work towards their goal. He says that their faith is actually of no value at all. So we pray and we ask our Creator to give us the patience, the fortitude, the stamina, the ability to be able to uh, make it to difficulties within our lives, but be able to conquer them and to come out as those who are the victorious people, not only in this world, but more importantly in the life to come. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.